Hello everyone, welcome to our series. In this video, we'll talk about heat maps. I will show you how to generate heat map for IS50 data, gene expression, and protein expression data. You'll find the documentation of this video on my R blog. I put the link in the description below, which also contains the code I used in this video. So let's start. So what's heat map? Heat map is a visualization technique that's used widely to reveal the hidden pattern of the data. So if we have a huge set of data and we want to see if there is a hidden pattern, heat map is a great way to use. It's not just visualize the result, it's also cluster the results according to the row and according to the column. So for example, in the classic bar plot, when we have qPCR data, we are looking for more than two genes, it's better to visualize it using the heat map. It not only shows the result, it also shows if there is any clustering of specific drug that upregulate or downregulate specific gene. Here, for example, we can see drug 10, 11, and 12, they downregulate this gene, and drug 2, 3, 7, and 8, they upregulate these genes. And this group of drug, they don't have any significant effect on those genes. So, in this video's example, we have three tables and we will generate a heat map from each table. For tips on how to prepare tables and load them into R, please watch video 9.3. I put the link in the description below. Table 1 is a result of MTTSA. IC50 are expressed in nanomolar. Table 2 is qPCR data and results are expressed in relative quantification. And table 3 is a LISA kit assay and concentration are expressed in nanogram per milliliter. So let's go to RStudio and see how we can generate a heat map from each table. So now you saved your file in a CSV format. We will use the read CSV function and we will load it into R. So we can look at the table here. First thing we need to do is we need to convert the first column into row names. So we'll use the row names function and convert it. We can see we have a row names now with the drug names, but still we have this column. So we will delete this one. So since this is IC50 data, we are more interested in the small data. So if we generate a heat map like this, we won't be able to see those small IC50 because the big number will overcome those small number. So what we need to do is we need to use the minus log 10 function. So we will have a better visualization for the IC50. So let's convert them into minus log 10 and convert it to matrix. The table, we will convert it into matrix. Now our table is ready for heat map. So you will install the package p heat map and i already installed it, so i'm not going to do it so i'm just going to load it by using the library function now we can generate the heat map simply by using p heat map function so we have the heat map right here also if we want to add a title or we can just use the main argument so to save it you can use zoom and you can play with it it will give you better way to control it and then you can just copy and paste it in your world file or in your PowerPoint. So second example is the qPCR data. This argument, they are similar to the previous one, but here we didn't use the minus log t function because we are really interested in the, the data and there is no big difference like the IC50. So we will run this command and generate the heat map. For the qPCR, it's very important also to see the actual number. So we can use the display number argument equal true. So we can see the actual upregulation, how many times uh, they are upregulated compared to the control, and how many times they are downregulated. So the last example is protein expression. Similar to the qPCR, we don't need to use minus log 10. So we will use the same commands. Let's generate the heat map. So if you don't want to cluster the rows, so if you just want to cluster the column, you can use cluster row equal false. You can see there is no clustering here. If you don't want to cluster the columns, 
you can use cluster calls equal false and the, it won't be cluster so that's it for this video next video will be about pca analysis thank you for watching